My name is Masani Bidiako. Um, I'm a member of the All African People's Revolutionary Party. I first encountered the party back in 1979, maybe 78. I was in Chicago, moved to Chicago, and I wanted to work in the organization somewhere working for my people. So I tried a couple different organizations. I ran into Comrade World, looked at his organization. I ran into the Nation of Islam, looked at that. One day I was traveling and I saw this big poster on an um, underpass. All African People's Revolutionary Party, African Liberation Day in Washington, D.C. I think it was two days before ALD was to happen. The next day, me and my girlfriend went out and bought a ticket. We jumped on the plane. When we got off the plane, ALD was happening. We caught a uh, cab to the park, and we saw Kwame Ture speaking, and saw all those people out there organizing. So we thought we had hit home. We knew that this is where we supposed to be. And it was the only organization that was talking about Africa, 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 Africa. And it was the only organization talking about organize, organize, organize. So after we left D.C., we came back to Chicago looking for the party. Couldn't find it. Then the party found us. Found us through Alexander Ben. He found us and invited us to a couple things. And from there, we began to look at Africa, uh, the AAPRP, and we joined it. And I have not regret being in the party, even though we battle all the time. But it was the party that made you study. And that's what I wanted to know. Back in the day, I thought we just took oppression. I thought we just didn't know any better. We weren't fighting or anything. But the party that made us sit and study and understand the class struggle and put it in perspective with the race struggle. So it would allow you to know that this is how you can free yourself. So it was attracted to me, and I was attracted to the party, and this is how I started my life in the party. I was fortunate enough to start in Illinois, but they had a strong base. They had a lot of strong cadre, people that had been in the movement that was here. So along with the studying that we was doing, we were thrown into work study with them where they challenge you to think, they challenge you to analyze, and they challenge you to speak up and fight. And so we began to organize on the campus, which also was just amazing to me that how much you could move to impact on people's lives with just a little history. So again, being naive, I had a daughter, and I thought if I let my mother take care of my daughter, I can make revolution in a year and we'd be free. Africa be free, everything would be okay. So my mother took my daughter and you know, that year passed, and we were still struggling, but as we get to study more and more, we realized that this was a consistent struggle, and it was going to happen all the time. I was fortunate enough that in this chapter, the brothers pushed you forward, pushed sisters forward. We had elder sisters that was in the party that was always in the forefront. Even though they didn't want us to see them as in the forefront, they were there, right? Which means that we wanted to be like them. Right. And one of them is our Auntie Cyrus I. We want to be like her. We want to travel like her. We want to impact on the struggle the way she did. And those and with that she taught us how to, you know, just continue to struggle. And she was always out there even out passing our flyers. Even if it was doing that type of work. She was doing that work. So as we began to study, work study got stronger and uh, we went through some changes in the party. But I was able to travel to Africa with the party. I was able to travel to Guinea. I was able to travel to uh, Gambia, Senegal, Ghana, through the party. And I understood then what they were saying. Not until Africa was free were we going to be free. So even though we want to work here and fix everything in electoral politics or have committees for our community organizations for other people, the reality is Africa. Africa, once Africa is unified and, str and strong, we will be strong. So, my dream that I have for the party for the next upcoming 10 years, we won't even go 20 years, is that we move to attack neocolonialism head on. And that we move to organize as much as we can. Sit in, in a relationship with the sisters and the brothers that's there, working with the organizations that's there, and to continue to educate the people of understanding how to defeat capitalism, how to defeat imperialism, and that's through organization and our people taking positions. Okay. As I mentioned, I live in, in Chwani, uh, which was formerly Pretoria, South Africa, an uh, uh, area right close to Johannesburg. Um, currently, I'm there as a professor at Chwani University of Technology. 
Uh, but I, I've tried to uh, to go to Africa as much as possible, and I've actually made my first trip to Africa, to South Africa, rather, in 1997, uh, when that was when uh, Sister Imani and Tamika were there organizing with the APRP, and it, it really struck me in terms of both of them being hard workers, and the and the role that they played in terms of not only organi not only organizing. Uh, with the women's unions there, respectively, in the Zappo and PAC, but also overall with the parties there. Uh, so I've been back and forth every year since 1997, and in 20, into 2014 I actually moved there uh, and worked closely both with the Zappo and the PAC, but mainly have been organizing uh, with all African People's Revolutionary Party in terms of setting up political education uh, work study circles there. But the work that I've engaged with in terms of Zania South Africa actually goes back to 1974 when I was uh, uh, a software engineer at Hewlett Packard and we found out that HP had an operation in South Africa so we organized a committee to try to put it into uh, the HP operation there. Uh, and they actually arranged for us to meet with the the head of the HP operation, uh, I'll never forget his name, uh, Tenny Stein, because when we met with him and he was uh, bragging about how Africans could eat in the same cafeteria uh, that Europeans could, and we asked him straight up, why do you maintain apartheid? And he said, well, we have to maintain apartheid because if we didn't, the ANC would come to power and they are communists, and they would bring communism, and I'm a Christian, so I'm opposed to communism. So, you know, I, I learned after that the Dutch Reformed Church was uh, uh, advocating uh, apartheid because they felt that was in line with Christianity. But this, this really rubbed me uh, the wrong way. Unfortunately, uh, they disbanded our committee because we uh, did not want to go along with the agenda that they had. And this, but in the process, this drew me into meeting Conrad's from the PAC and the ANC and then prepared me better for when I then uh, joined the party in 1975. So uh, th this was my first encounter with, uh, with those from Azania. Now living there and seeing how, even though politically apartheid has ended, that economic apartheid remains. And yes, the ANC came to power, but they didn't bring us communism. They didn't bring us socialism, unfortunately. Uh, and that, but that's really what we need, but it requires some serious political education, but right now what we find is that we're still in occupied Azania, and I call it occupied Azania because apartheid economically is still very much alive. In fact, we've seen an increase in the wealth gap between Africans and the, the, the descendants of the settlers because post-apartheid, uh, Africa assumed it was all right now to work with these same multinationals that they had boycotted uh, under apartheid so that we see an increased wealth amongst the Africans in, in, in Azania, occupied Azania. So this is, just speaks to why it's so important that we understand the, the system of capitalism and how it works in terms of neocolonialism and how it's collaborated particularly in occupied Azania with the remnants of apartheid. Uh, in terms of economic apartheid and how it's important through our study process that we understand clearly uh, the, the, the antagonistic relationship between the process of socialism where people will be in control of the resources and in control of their labor uh, through a people's state or through a people's mass party and, and how that is antagonistically different from the capitalist system that we live under today. Yes. Um... I am very, very proud to be a member of the All African People's Revolutionary Party. I've talked about my entry into it a little bit in my book, Evolution of a Revolutionary, that I published in 2017. But uh, I had been working with Pan-Africanist groups, uh, organizations, before I joined the AAPRP. But when I learned about the actual uh, work-study process in it, I j did join and became a member of a chapter here in Chicago, Illinois. I have been since 1978 
a member of the Illinois chapter, uh, except for a few years when I was out of the country. Uh, part of my most um, Where? memorable experience was when I was outside of the country in um, Saint, um, in the Virgin Islands in St. Croix. I helped organize down there for three years and it was really a wonderful experience working with young people from various part, from various islands and working there to build a chapter in um, St. Croix in the Virgin Islands. Uh, I have um, worked mainly in the administration committee because I'm one of those administration type of people, but I, it's been wonderful to have worked uh, with recruiting students at various colleges. Uh, often they saw me as an elder as I was even for them, but uh, to be able to speak to them in classes and to enlighten them and encourage them to do some studying always, always made me feel good, especially since I spent my career as a teacher. Uh, one of the most, ex uh, another of the most ex exciting experiences I had was going to places like Grenada to um, uh, meet with the New Jewel movement, which was uh, surging there at the time. Uh, actually going to Africa to various countries and meeting with the PDG in Guinea and uh, many other occasions like that. It's been a wonderful experience. I look forward to spending the rest of my life. I'm like Kwame Ture. Uh, I'm a revolutionary till the end. And I expect to see the party develop more and more in Africa, which is our homeland and which is the objective of our organization is to build a united African socialist revolutionary organization in, to make it revolutionary and socialist in Africa. And so the more that we develop in Africa, the more uh, I will be happy to see. And whatever contribution I can make toward that, that's my goal.